Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. If you're looking for PTCGO codes, you can go ahead and check out the Potown store. You can even use the Omnipoke code for an extra 5% discount on your orders. For today's video, it's myself and Jack. It's been a while since he's been on. I'm here. Um, but we're doing a QA. and a I posted um, on the Omnipoke Facebook page that I was suffering from a little bit of writer's block maybe a couple of weeks ago. And we never really got around to this Q&A, but a lot of people came in with questions, both on the Discord that we have, uh, the Team Omnipoke Discord, if you're not part of that, make sure you do get involved, and also on the Facebook page. And a handful of people have come in with their questions, so me and Jack are going to go over it and see um, yeah, what we, uh, what we think about some of these. So we'll start off on the Facebook pages with Deadly Bee's question, best deck you never wanted to play? Best deck I never wanted to play? That's... That's tough because over the past couple of years, I've tried to at least try everything. Mm -hmm. um, in recent times, I never really, I never play, really played any of the stall stuff after uh, Sylvia like two years ago. And stall at one point last season was actually looked to be in a pretty promising position. Uh, it had a hold over Zoro in a lot of cases. Had a really good Zapdos matchup, and those were two of the strongest archetypes. So I think stall is probably. One of the big things. I also didn't play Picarom until like four months after it was out. So I did eventually play Picarom, and I'm still I'm still a fan of the deck now. But I didn't play Picarom for at least I don't think it was until Unbroken Mons was out that I actually even tried it. So that yeah, I think Picarom is probably the the biggest one. Yeah, I think I'm similar to you in that I'll try more or less everything. I think that's part of like having a YouTube channel. You'll at yeah. least give something like two or three hours or whatever. Yeah. I think the tournaments, the only thing that comes to my mind in recent memory is uh, Gardevoir. When Gardevoir first came out, mm. uh, it won Worlds, and I still like refused <laughs> to ever play that deck because I just hated Rare Candy at the time. Um, so I think Guardi is the one that I basically never played. I did take it to a cup once. Um, I think I got top eight, and I hated the experience. I absolutely <laughs> hated it. So yeah. yeah. And what's the worst deck you've ever played? You can start again. There was, there was a time. I think I think this was the last time I played Zoroark. Actually, there, it was it was right around. It was like March this year. Uh, I played Zoro Rock for a cup, and I think I went like one four one or something abysmal. And it the deck like obviously the deck wasn't bad. Zoro was never awful, but it was the worst Zoro's ever felt. It was everything felt so much more aggressive. It was like in Pikaram and Zapdos meta, so everything was applying pressure from turn one. Um, there was a lot of one prize decks around, so uh, it sometimes struggled to trade against those. And there was also a lot of, in the other hand, three prize decks that if you didn't, if you couldn't get access to Lycan Rock or if, if you were gusted out of the game, uh, you just couldn't deal with multiple Pika Roms because they were so chunky. So the worst experience I've had recently was when Zoroark was bad. But that, uh, obviously, Zoroark isn't terrible. I think another pretty bad deck I've played, um, that there was, there was a. A couple of tournaments where me and Joe played a lot of Mega Guardi, and it was it was another case of the deck is great, but it was not the play for the tournament at all. Mm -hmm. We we played it or I played it for Sheffield and got top eight, and I was like this deck is great. Then two weeks later we both went to Sweden, we both played it and both bombed pretty hard, uh, and it was just I mean it was great because it was the first time I'd played abroad, but also uh, it was one of the worst <laughs> one of the worst experiences of playing one of my favorite decks of all time. Yeah, we both took the comfort pick, really. That yeah. was the first thing that came to my mind as well. Not that Mega Guardi was, like, ever bad. It's no. just it had reached its peak at the time, and there were just other decks coming out. Like, it was Sun and Moon. Was it Sun and Moon Base had just come yeah, out? Yeah, Sun so and Moon it, Base. Like, Desi Plume was just starting to yeah. really get hype. Yeah, so it just wasn't, you know, it didn't stand up to the decks that had just come out. No. Um, so, yeah, that's the one that comes into my mind. But, I mean, I've played all sorts of jank. I've played, like, I mean, at Cups, I've played more or less anything. I've played, yeah. like, Persimian at Cups won a cup with Persimian, broken. Yeah. Um, but I've played so much stuff at this point. It's Again, hard to well, narrow down bad things. Like and say, I was bad for a long time as well. So, Like you say, especially living in the UK, we get access to so many cups. It means you can really experiment sometimes, which is a, it is it's honestly really great. It means that you're not... I mean, I think both of us have played Welder for the past six cups or so, so mm -hmm. we're not experimenting that much. But we do, like, we have options, which yeah. not only living in the UK means that we can do that, which is great. All right. Thanks for those questions. Uh, Sean asks, how does it feel that Jack is the better half of Omnipoke? It's just it's great, isn't it's it? It's factually true at the fact moment as well. Factually accurate for now. Joe's Joe's going to have his resurgence in Paris. I can feel it. Maybe. I did well in Lille, the Lille special last time. So exactly. I'm hoping France brings it back. Um, but no, it's I feel fine about it. 
Uh, Heavy Tortoise asks, best deck in standard for beginners, either with or without a budget to start learning with? I think recently there's the new Ultra Necrozma decks, which definitely gets access to Jirachi so much easier for a lot mm. of people. And that tends to leave Malamar as like a budget option. It's got the yeah. actual theme deck as well. Yeah. So that's a rinse and repeat deck. Pretty I, easy. Yeah, those those decks, I think they're like twenty, twenty five dollars. If you buy two of those, you have pretty much fifty cards of a standard Malamar deck right now, mm -hmm. which is honestly really, really good for just getting into the game. Malamar's not overly complicated as well. It teaches yeah. a lot of different mechanics, uh and like energy, um uh, what like energy management, that kind of thing, spreading damage which isn't immediately obvious. It leans you into a lot of different mechanics. So I think that's if you're looking to get into the game right now, that's probably one of the best options you can do. Those two decks, uh, even the Rayquaza one's pretty good. It, get, it gets you like Coco, two or three Rays, which are not awful cards. Turbo mm -hmm. Rays, not terrible. Uh, Nagas are promos, so you can have some fun with like Turbo Ray trying to race against some of these three prizes. Yeah, I think if the budget wasn't an issue, I'd say something like Bacephalon or Picarom. Yeah. They're pretty straightforward, aggressive decks. Mm -hmm. Um, very similar rinse and repeat style decks that really don't change much. Yeah. Um, you have like a couple of intricacies in terms of what attacks you use on your main attackers. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, whatever you're against, you're going to try and full blitz straight away or you're yeah. going to try and hit B strings. So Blound, Yeah, Blounds especially. that like Blounds lists nowadays are just all four of. It's just about hitting your B strings on the turns that you need them and your welders in the early turns and that kind of thing. So... Yeah, Blounds is definitely a really, really good call for just getting into the game. All right, The Warrior asks, if you could take one card from Expanded and bring it into Standard, what would it be? That's a cool question. That's that's really tough, because Mega Mew, uh, Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team open so many options that it would pro I'd probably find myself looking for uh, an old Mega EX or something, because there's some really, really <laughs> cool things that you can do with those. Um there's obviously going to be arguments things like Via Seeker and Guzma, but honestly, I'm pretty happy, especially as we're getting Great Catch coming out in the next set. I'm pretty happy mm. with no Gust or the, the state of the Gust we have right now. Um, so yeah, it'd probably be a Pokemon. I like, <laughs> I I, li I like the concept of Mega Guardi, especially looking at s some early lists for the expanded like Mewtwo Mega Guardi lists, and the fact we have Tina, it means you could <laughs> could do some real fun stuff with that as well. So I don't know, something like that, just off the top of my head. Um, something that would make Mega Mewtwo, uh, Mewtwo uh, even more wacky, I guess. I, l I love looking at expanded Mewtwo lists because mm -hmm. the card pool is the deck that can abuse the card pool the most, I think. Yeah, true. I'd be pretty boring. I'd say something like Super Rod or Stretcher, yeah. Ultra Ball, Nest Ball. All the cards we're crying out for, basically, since the rotation. Mm. Well, honestly, something like that. Um, now we have resets, that maybe less so. I don't N, think we need N so much. We're getting a couple of decent supporters in the next set as well. But yeah, I think so. the game's really lacking either a good yeah. recovery piece or a good search piece. Super Rod Something like teammates as well for non-GX decks. Mm. Cards like those are cards that I've always loved to play. Um, so something along those lines. Um, Peter asks, if you could erase any standard meta deck from this format from existence, which would it be and why? Erase it. Uh, honestly, there's... Uh, I, re I really like standard right now. A lot of people don't like it, but I really do. Arguments could be for like PG control just because it's a controly archetype. I also think it's potentially the best deck in format right now. So, it, I think it ha can win almost any matchup, and maybe so maybe you could argue that. But honestly, there's not a huge amount of decks that I dislike in this format. It does feel a little bit high rolly, I will admit, but it doesn't like it doesn't feel as bad as getting let loose turn one and that kind of thing. So I guess PG control just because it's kind of hard to. Were kind of annoying to deal with in some cases, but I also am a fan of playing it, so it's, I'd say it with reluctance. That's I fair. I think I'd actually say Malamar for this, just because it's like known as the gatekeeper for every other non-GX deck. That's it ruins true. so much creativity mm. for all these other wacky decks, like things like Spiritomb, Frostlass, a bunch of like stage twos and other stage one non-GXs are just kept in their place. Obviously, they don't have much ball search right now, so they have their own hurdles. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like, it's always the first question mark of, like, how the hell does this beat Malamar? Oh, it doesn't. I guess we've got to move on. Yeah, Malamar is... I oh, Just erase Giratina, basically. Malamar can stay. Just erase Distortion Door. Giratina or something. Yeah, that That ability is, is too bonkers. good. Yeah, okay. Brankus asks, uh, what are your thoughts on Baby Bacephalon in the current meta? I did well last weekend. Um, the, the guy actually posted he felt it was the best anti-meta deck right now. It, he felt like it had strong matchups everywhere. So it seems to be 
if, if you if you're not too afraid of stamp stamp is it's probably one of its biggest hurdles um obviously the deck is so hand-based you need to be able to find your fires all the time so if your meta isn't full of stamps honestly it's probably really quite strong right now it's one of the best pokemon that can trade up against tag teams it's even played in um certain reshizard builds so that's how good of a attacker it is itself so it seems pretty strong as long as you're not too scared of stamp as if there's not many stamp decks about then i'd say it's probably one of the better non-ex archetypes right now yeah certainly like always a consideration in welder box mm -hmm. um so it's already like we know the damage output's insane we know the car's very good there's great fire synergy right now everyone giving you giant hearth for a free hundred damage in a lot of matchups is really good mm -hmm. um and as the green deck i've started testing around with it on ptgo uh, and it's pretty reasonable um again like one of the best non-gx decks we have for sure so pretty cool all right, Mad Captain asks thoughts on Poker Gear over Jirachi in Mali with a clown emoji. That sounds. I think that's an in joke more than anything yeah, else. Yeah, that sounds terrible. Don't don't take this man's advice. Okay, he's got some Jirachis now at least. Yeah. All right, Supercell Cambo asks thoughts on Welder. Is it a good card? It's a very good card. I don't think it's as much of a problem card as everyone says. I think the the fact that Fire has so much support um, is maybe the issue. But I don't actually think Welder's overly broken compared to some of the stuff we've had in the past. It's the fact that you can combo it with Hearth and Reshizard being one of the best attackers we have ever seen. You know, it Welder's in a spot where it's all kind of hit the hit everything at once and we've got all of the fire support at once. I think if we'd sort seen Welder six months ago, it would be it would still be a very good card, but there would be nowhere near as much anger yeah. about how strong it is. It just happens to have it's a bit small card pool. Crossroad. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah, a small yeah. card pool right now. So like, there's actually just no alternative mm -hmm. for a lot of decks. It is the driving force of you know probably two of the three best decks in the format right now, in Ability Zard and just Mewtwo. Like in in reference to what I said earlier, though, it's better than having things like Let Loose and that kind of thing oh, dictate sure. the format. I think like yeah. having I'd rather have see everyone get set up than you beat someone by not get, letting them get set up. I'd rather ha let everyone have Welders every turn if it means there's more intricacies in decision making rather than just oh I was let loose and I didn't draw out of it and for sure so I think that there's going to be something a lot of yeah. if there's going to be something ruling the format it's at least like a tempo card yeah 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 because then people can come back and we've seen stamp get so good um over the last few weekends like we're seeing even like guardian and um greenzard put out reasonable results against yeah. ability zard because they can make comebacks and then like welders so integral for them the whole game yeah, it's still but a combo they, card. They miss it, and then they're kind of in trouble. Mm -hmm. So thanks for those um, questions over on the Discord. We're going to hop over to the Facebook page now, and uh, we've got, starting off with um, this one here, just uh, just write me any time. Oh, okay, okay. He's asking uh, about decks in standard. Okay, cool. I'll, I will ask you for decks in standard. All right, Reese asks, is Ability Zard truly the best deck in standard, and why? So the time of us making this post... A lot of people like thought it was, it was like two weeks ago. right? So, um, I think it's sort of come to light that it's among the best decks in standard. I think you have to remember that this uh, this last weekend's regional results and the special results, it was pretty bad for Zard, but it still made like among the most top thirty twos. That's the thing. Um, it, it was bad for Zard in a in a vacuum of though in a vacuum oh, sorry in comparison to how it had done the week before in the mm -hmm. weeks before mm -hmm. but it was still this i think the second most converting deck of two uh, the second and third most converting deck of the two regionals the second most converting deck of the special um there was still one like the, i think it was actually an anomaly not seeing any in top eight especially top 16 in ac i still think it is a tier one deck it's also had such a huge target on its back it's it managed to have a target on its back straight after Worlds immediately, and then still do really well in, in Sheffield. And now, so now it's got like two targets on its back because it's done well twice. It, it dodged and weaved the targets in the first place. So I think it is easily the most countered deck, or the mo or the deck people are trying to counter the most, even if there's not much they can do about it. And I think the results do show that. I don't think it's at all not a tier one deck. Um, I don't think it's it perhaps has a hold over the format like we first thought. But I still wouldn't argue it's any lower than tier one. It's it has too much access. We've just said how many things that 
fire has right now. It has the most consistent gusting, has the most consistent energy, it has very strong energy attachment, plus draw power. It has Hearth, which is honestly one of the most insane cards ever printed. It's better than Viridian, which we already thought was one of the best cards, one of the best stadiums ever printed. So it has so much right now. I think it's impossible to say it's lower than tier one. Yeah, I agree for sure. Um, the other thing I would note though is that like as it's got so popular, it's actually put a few of the top tier players off playing the deck. Yeah, just because mirror matches don't give you much control. It feels like no matter how good a player is in a mirror, specifically for welder mirrors, it's just who hits the welders more yep. often. So. Mm -hmm. I think some of the results for other decks doing so well is because a lot of the top players were piloting other stuff just because they were put off by the deck. Mm. So they could easily have gone that far in the tournament with Abilities Ard, and that could be a reason why we're seeing other decks do better. You but. can you can see that as well. In Cologne, Benji Pham, who had an insane season like two seasons ago, stuck with the deck and came 11th. Yeah. Like that, that in itself shows a good players piloting the deck will still do well. Mm -hmm. It is also down to, like you say, a bit of welder roulette, but also the the deck has inherent po uh, like power just behind it. So For I think sure. I think there's definitely no argument to say it's not tier one, even if it's not BDIF. All right, Josh asks, uh, from what you've seen so far from Cosmic Eclipse, uh, what excites you the most? It's a great question. It's a, I like it's this a, question a lot. Is a, I just did the set review. It is a very good question. Me and Joe chatted about the set a couple of nights ago. Um, he's really got me quite excited about Volcarona. That card <laughs> seems pretty good. Again, more fire stuff. Great. Um, Volcarona Silvale, I think, will probably be one of the first decks you profile, because sure. it seems pretty powerful. I'd like to see how powerful Reshiram is. Uh, I think there's a huge amount of potential there, but I think there's also a huge amount of flop potential there. Uh, I think it could be overhyped, but I could also see it being very, very strong. Uh, the card I'm the most excited to see play is probably Arceus Diaga Palkia, because I want to see how someone builds it, because I can't work out how to build that card. <laughs> But in a vacuum, the card is incredibly strong. So mm. I w I'm really interested to see, especially the first wave of lists, how people are actually deciding to build this. And hopefully from there, we'll be able to settle on something. Because I think no one can argue that the card is strong in a vacuum. It's just currently there's no real way to accelerate two types of energy to it right now. That isn't things like End Resolve, which I think is a pretty mediocre card. So I'm in really interested to see how that works out. Because I think in the right list it could be format dominating that jex attack is super strong but also um i just have no idea how to yeah how to work that one out the only idea that i've seen is just like shove in keldios and just hope that the keldios carry and yeah. i'm not sure if that's good enough so it could be one of those cards that i'm like completely wrong in if it does just end up working out and having the right partners i think for me i'm really excited to test out dark box again i yeah. think it actually works now, and the Guzzlord seems nuts. Um, so that seems good, and I have a soft spot for the Clefairy doll decks as well. I want to try Behem again, and I want to try Sawsbuck. <laughs> so I'm a believer of the uh, the hit-and-run style decks, and I, I just like those decks in general. I've always liked that style. Um, so it's going to be fun to test those out again. It looks to be a really good set. Yeah. All right, Mike asks, Can my Cargo GX be its own legitimate deck again? Uh, after the next set, I feel like it's one of the only few cards that takes knockouts on tag teams while utilizing red and blue and welder. Am I missing something? I mean, am I onto something? You mean the fact that the the card is already used in Mewtwo, so we know it's a pretty strong raw attacking option. Obviously, you don't have to get over the stage one hump, but red and blue really does help with the stage one hump. Um, I could see it. I don't think it'll ever be as strong as some of the other fire decks, but I could see it being in in a similar vein to like Baby Blounds. Maybe it being kind of an anti-meta sort of thing. I don't think again Malamar's another big question. It feels like Malamar could be pretty um, awkward for it because they trade. I think probably quite favorably with you when you have to hit through spell tags and stuff. I guess you can run the fire nine tails that kind of thing, but it feels in general like you're going to be doing more work for a similar payout to something like a Reshizard. And Reshizard is one card that's also a basic that can attack turn one. Um, obviously, things like red and blue are a really, really strong selling point for the card. And I think it will have definitely some highlight room moments, but I don't know that it'll ever break top tiers, I don't think. Yeah, I like I like what he's going for in that you just have more welders, basically. Mm. So you have that extra like layer of protection yeah. against like you're not just having four supporters and hoping that gets you through. But I think you're right. I think we just have better attackers right now. Like, use it once in Mewtwo, and it's great that once. 
but the fact that this archetype will have to reload so often, yeah, I think that's kind of the thing keeping it down in play. Um, and also, like you said, there's better payoffs for Welder and stuff. Uh, I think there's better payoffs for Red and Blue if you just have the Volcarona. You're going to do 160, and then you have the flexible cheatsy Extra doodling cheesy, that you can yeah. do, which is pretty cool. Um, so I would place my hat on Volcarona over Mag Cargo overall. <laughs> right, Jordan has a bunch of questions for us, which is awesome. Uh, what's your favorite standard format for the TCG? Or what was your favorite standard? Uh, I have a soft spot for Heart Gold Soul Silver to MVI. I have a soft spot for um, just as Sun and Moon was releasing, sort of, because Vileplume was kind of sketchy, but also, actually, it, like the first, I think, two sets of uh, Sun and Shield, uh, Sun and Shield, Sun and Moon was released, because that was when Decidueye was really quite good, and I loved playing Decidueye. <laughs> Um, so I think one of those two formats. Last format was okay. I don't think I've ever loved a deck more than I've loved Zap Beasts, but also I didn't like anything else in them. I think I like Zap. I think it looks like I like Zap. It feels like I like Zapdos so much because I didn't really like any other deck in the format. Yeah. So I think probably I I, I love the Heart Gold Silver era stuff. I know a lot of people don't like it at all, uh, but I really really that was kind of when I really started playing. Um, and also recently, especially because I've been. Um, around at Joe's so much. We've been playing a lot of old format, like uh, SP format and that kind of thing. And the more I play that, the more I really like that format. I can see why everyone says it is the king of the TCG formats. Um, so I think Heart Got or Silver around that era is where I enjoyed the most, but I can see myself slowly winning towards the really, really good SP stuff. Yeah, I'd say similar. Like Majestic Dawn to Call of Legends, that sort of bulk was when I was first like learning my craft and yeah. learning the game and sort of revisiting those and stuff. Um, it's always really fun. Um, I didn't mind 2016 Worlds, even though there was a bunch of item lock. It's when there was Toad, Plume, and Trev. But there was also Night March, and then there was like Yveltal decks. Uh, the only thing I didn't like was Greninja about that format. <laughs> uh, but I thought I, I still like heart back to one of my favorite decks I've ever played for Worlds, which is like an anti meta Yveltal deck that played um, Mew to Coffee Size Metoad and Drudigan and all these fun things. So. I still loved figuring out that world's format, mm. and that, I think that's one of the most fun times I've had playing the game. Um, have you ever played VG? Uh, I've played about 10 games of Showdown, but never properly. I have decided, though, um, because I have a Switch now, and a lot of our friends are really looking into VG this year, that if I don't get my OCSE stipend and I don't go for Top 22, I'm going to try and get my invite for TCG ASAP, and then try and get my VG invite as well, because I'm going to be getting Sword and Shield no matter what. So... Why not try and do both if I can't quite get top 22 this year? Um, I've always wanted to try VG. Uh, we have two, within our little friend group, we have two very, very good VG players that play a lot, of, that mainly play TCG, but when they play VG, they're very good. So I don't think it will be too hard to learn. Uh, so yeah, I think I I haven't played much in the past, only showdown, like random battles and stuff. But I really would like to, because I think, especially with Sword and Shield, the games already look insane. Uh, and we've still got a month of reveals and stuff to come out. So, yeah, I think this will be the time, if ever, that I will start playing. Yeah, I mean, when I even think back to the start of this channel, uh, one of the first videos we made was Showdown Battles. Uh, and what they Monotype Monday. Monotype Monday was definitely a feature that I did for about two weeks. Realised that more people were watching the TCG videos and then kept mm. on those. But there was a point, that was like Gen 4, when I was like pretty into Showdown, pretty into the competitive side of VG as well as TCG. Uh, I never really played the VG events, but at, at that time I was basically not playing TCG event, events either. I only attended like three or four tournaments a year. Um, so the it could have gone either way. This, yeah. this channel could have gone either way, really. Um, and with Sword and Shield, I'm definitely going to try and stream some of that, do mm -hmm. some playthroughs, do some Nuzlocke, stuff like that. And because um, I'm basically going for just a regular invite as well, I might have time to explore some more VG stuff. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah. As long as the game's good, which it looks like it's going to be. It looks be. really good, yeah. How much time do you sink into Pokemon games? I think he means the, the video games here. Oh, VG. Oh, uh, well, video games. Um, I hope he means the video games. Less, yeah, I don't want to admit. <laughs> TCG is uh, probably not enough, to be honest. But yeah, v uh, video games. Honestly, not enough. I I never even got Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. I played through Sun and Moon once, had fun, but they didn't do much for me. Uh, similar with X and Y, played through them once, didn't do much for me. The last game I really, really enjoyed was Heart Gold Soul Silver. 
those games were insane. Platinum is still my favorite game, so those I probably have two or three playthroughs, just at, at least like full playthroughs, not including stuff where you just restart to do the first mm-hmm. few. Um, so yeah, not not as much as I used to. I think I will. As, again, as long as Sword and Shield doesn't completely flop, I think I probably will play a lot of that because I have a Switch and the Switch is just so easy to throw my bag on. We're heading to events and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's going to be really easy to play. Um, so I think I'll play a fair bit of Sword and Shield. But yeah, I didn't even get Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. I don't know anything about the stories. I played through Sun and Moon once. They were pretty good. I liked some of the Pokemon in Gen 7, but it it the I think the... The spark it died a little bit for Sword and Sh- uh, for Sun and Moon for me, but hopefully Sword and Shield can revive it. Yeah, I think I'm similar for the more recent games. I think usually I'll do a like a run through regularly, and then I'll like instantly restart and go for like a Nuzlocke to have like a bit more of a challenging run. Yeah. But then I just put them down basically. So the more modern games, not a lot. When I was younger, my God, I think like for Ruby Sapphire, Gold Silver. Um, Diamond Pearl, I must have clocked like 400 hours on each of those games like yeah. easily, yeah, yeah, just definitely. battling with friends, like I remember just grinding the Elite Four to get level 100s and yeah. stuff like I was I was just on that game all the time, so it used to be the game that I played all the time, non-stop yeah. um, I think it peaked at Diamond and Pearl when I played like a lot, a lot, a lot um, Gen 4 and best did gen. eggs and all that stuff but yeah, I mean it's it's been a while since I've had that sort of amount of time put into the games. Nowadays, it's just playthroughs a couple times over. Um, what's your favorite Pokemon game? Uh, it'd be Platinum or Heart Glass Absorber for me. Probably Platinum. Mm-hmm. I, Gen Four is my favorite Gen, like by far. I don't think there's a single Gen Four Pokemon I don't really like. Uh, it was the, it wasn't the f- first Gen I played. The first Gen I played was three, but it was the first new, like new Gen. I knew a lot about Pokemon and then played Emerald, whereas. Diamond and Pearl was the first new gen I played, and Platinum did so much for that series. It improved the series. Like it was basically t- two times what the games. Di- I still think yeah. Diamond and Pearl are incredible, but it was basically twice the game Pearl was. Um, and Heart God Soul Silver, even though I didn't play Gold and Silver, it, it felt so nostalgic even for me. <laughs> it was just there was just so much n- good stuff about it. Even like the little stuff like walking around with your Pokemon. There's so many just little nice things. So yeah, I think Gen Four 100 percent is my favorite gen yeah hgss is just such a good feel good game the, like, everything's so well it's really nice neat clean and you get all those little nice extras the other, the other huge thing i think about those gens is they actually had a post game yeah like they were I, long games they haven't they haven't in my opinion in a good post game if at all over the past three gens but right. the post games like the post game for hgss was another eight gyms which is was just insane and then red yeah. Uh, and then the post game for um, per Di- Diamond and Pearl was there was like two or three more routes plus like the little battle area up in the top corner, which opened up like four new legendaries uh, plus like all of the Giratina stuff in the original two. Yeah. There was just and then like Diagra and Palkia in the in Platinum. So there was just actually so much game in yeah. them. It wasn't just it's oh you like got the eight gyms. Surf to a cave. Yeah, find yeah. find the guy that and then it's you just the ba- get, yeah, and, and then it's just there. the battle tower. Yeah, yeah, good shout. I'm pretty much with you on those. Uh, what are your fo- uh, top five favorite cards? Well, this is this is very hard to narrow down. Off the top of my head, running through them quickly, it would be Mega Guardi. It would be <laughs> uh, I mean I've answered that. Uh, it would be Gyarados from Stormfront. That was what really got me into the game. Um... Stellar Wish is uh, it makes so many <laughs> many decks viable. Can you can, can I say that? I mean, um, you'll end up just saying Uxie, Shaman, Stellar Wish if you go down that route. Yeah. But you can if you want to. Uh, Decidueye was a really really cool card. I love mm-hmm. Decidueye. Um, one another of my favorite cards that's never really seen much success, but I think one of my favorite cards is Solgaleo GX. That that's the first. Well, I, I, for a long time, there's definitely better ones now, but for a long time, I was like, this GX attack is just the best. It, all right. we need is a way to try and get this guy into play, and this guy's insane. It's a good hype card. Um, sure. So Solgaleo GX is definitely one of my... I think I think it is... I, I think Solgaleo is actually one of my favourite Pokemon from that gen as well, which I think it is a really, really good, well-designed Pokemon. A f- fire Lion with a Sun as a main. That's just 
pretty cool. What more do you want? Yeah. You, you can't ask her anymore. Um, I have a soft spot for Greninja, but I don't know whether I'm allowed to say that in Joe's company. <laughs> I mean, I just laugh at you. Um, <laughs> I'll say the break rather than the stitching one. Okay. That's that's slightly better. Yeah, the break was cool. Um, a lot of the breaks were cool, yeah. But yeah, no, I think I think all time favorite card would probably be Stormfront Gyarados. That 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 deck is what got me into the game, so I think I have to pay it the respect it's due. I mean, I would also put Gyarados in my top five as well because mm. it's like the first real competitive deck that I built. It's like that step up when yeah. I just sort of went from one thing to another. Uh, it went from like you know Venusaur theme deck stuff. Yeah to like this deck is insane mm-hmm. kind of thing and Gyarados was also in a theme deck so like you could see the progression I was buying theme decks at the time yeah um Decidueye great one Mega Guardi great one Vespiquen is still one of my favorites um just because I mean Compressor was like such a silly card and going all in on that sort of approach was cool oh, yeah. trying to manage the resources that end is always good I love the bats Mm-hmm. Um, Zubat, Golbat, Crobat, the entire line is awesome. One um, thing neither of us said was Zoroark. That surprises me. I mean, I like I, Zoro. I like Zoro. I think Zoro is... The thing is, is I played him too much and then got depressed with him. That's the th- that's exactly what I was going to say. I played Zoro and I, I, I binded my Zoros. Like, people had to rip them out of my hands. I did not want to bench yeah. that deck, but it got... It got... You just couldn't keep up. I had highs and lows of Zoro. I feel like the highs I mean you have so highs and you have a lot of highs and lows of a lot of cards if you play them enough, um, but like Zoroark definitely felt like it tailed off for like three or four months when I was like still just being like, what if I play four great balls? <laughs> then I'll survive let loose. <laughs> no, and then like you still don't. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, what's your favorite mechanic introduced in the TCG? For example, breaks, GX, EX, level X, prisms. I like the GX mechanic. I like having evolving two prizes rather than just basic two prizes along with uh, along with a mix of basic two prizes as well but the gx attack thing i think is one of the really really innovative things they've done um it lets them make broken cards like it, it they're, they're not des- limited by design space which is so good having freedom to make what you want in a game is really really good just knowing that you can only play once which is i uh, use it once which i think is really really strong uh I like. I never played when level X's were really, really good. I think I had one tournament before level X's uh, were gone. But I think level X's and hopefully V Max's, because I think that will be what they are. I like that style of mechanic. Uh, similar with breaks. I like evolving. I'm, I like making my big guy bigger, but not like um, more prizes or more HP. I like giving it right. an extra ability, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Um, I've never. Been, I, I was never a fan of the EX mechanic because it was just big basics. Uh, they had nothing special about them. Right. It was just they were old e- uh, new EXs, right? Big yeah, yeah, yeah. Uppercase EX. Yeah, yeah, like things like your Velton and stuff. They were great cards, but there was nothing special about them. They were just very well statted cards that were the best in their format. There was no gimmick with them other than them giving up two prizes. So I think EXs are probably my least favorite. And the Prism Stars, I loved the concept of, but they create such a really stupid feeling of the game because if you don't draw your your one of you're like well i lost so i didn't draw my one of but again it was a it was a way that they could create really broken cards that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know everyone wants to see so that was a the prism stars were a real love and hate mechanic because i think they i don't know what they could have done but i don't think they necessarily got it right um yeah. But like things like Thunder Mountain and Tapu Koko are such silly broken cards. They're the whole reason Picarom is even a deck right now. Yeah. Um, and I love seeing cards like that. I love looking at a card and going, "Wow, that is." What are you doing here? Bonkers. Yeah. It's just unfortunate that there wasn't there wasn't enough. Like, I mean, maybe it would have been too strong if there was real good search for them as well. But it it like I say, it just feels really bad when you play all of these one offs that are so broken that you just lose because you didn't hit them or you prize them or whatever. Um, yeah, I think that that really sucked about them. I think that's the thing I would say about prisms and even a specs. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna print those cards that give one player such an insane advantage, you have to make sure that everyone can find them and everyone can get them from their prizes. Yeah. So if you don't have those aspects, the person who didn't prize it or the person who high rolled into it off the opening hand wins, and the other person doesn't. 
So like, I didn't mind Coco Prism when there was Nest Ball because everyone could get their Coco Prism down and do whatever they would. You just you expected it to happen, yeah. right? Um, but now like you have to draw into it first, or like you need to have one of your two Pokecoms. Obviously, you can change your deck to be more heavily search focused, and like yeah, we've seen Nav you... go in to get. The but you mountain. don't want to have to do that, like. You, but yeah, you want, you, like I say, you want to be able to play these broken cards consistently, and that kind of. As thing. long as the opponent can also have the same their own, yeah. like their own version to, yeah. of those cards, yeah. right? So if you are going to make those sorts of one offs, make sure we can see it from prizes, and make sure that we can search out these cards, and people have equal opportunities to search them out. Side think, decks. Yeah, I mean that's what I was going to move on to. I actually hate level X's and breaks. I think they're awful. Because really. Like they're stage threes, or like uh, yeah. they're, they're these cards that you need to have done so well, so much, so much yeah. to even get any use out of the card, and it's dead the entire rest of the time. So I am praying that V Maxes are side deck. I, I would love TCG side deck because I just hate having to play these cards that don't help you get going ever. And they just feel again like high rolly cards. Yeah. So I like, I really like the thought of them being. Um, side deck. It's also like a really, really good thing for uh, sort of the complexity of the game. You can see ahead of time kind of what your opponent's planning and you can start to think mm -hmm. about, oh, I can see that he's going to get this huge Pokemon out with this kind of attack that's maybe going to snipe things. So maybe I need to start thinking about what I'm benching, that kind of thing. It, like there's some not, uh, good good things about being able to keep surprise factor, but also there's good things about uh, about being able to plan your turns, about being able to because then it, you you create more of a situation where the better player will win rather than just oh I I found my, like you say I found my V Max and I kill three Pokemon well right. the, the the player can be like right okay I can see this is coming Activate let me start it, let yeah. me start managing my bench let me start thinking about how am I going to respond to this it's a lot more skill based when you can always activate the card you want to activate on the right time as well so timing becomes like really important and that's skill based for not only the opponent reacting but the person you, trying to activate yeah. these cards. Making sure, like, especially if a VMAX, we know the mechanic is, like, for three turns or whatever, so maybe you're only allowed to VMAX once in the game, one yeah. for one turn or for two turns or something. Yeah. And, like, making sure you make the most value out of that is going to be a really cool back and forth. So mm. I'd love that to be on the side. So to answer your question, my favorite would probably be GX because it pushes evolutions. Uh, but Tag Team GX is a trash. <laughs> um, what's one thing you hope to see in Sword and Shield era for TCG? More ball search. 100% more ball search. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care about anything else. I just want more ball search. I don't I don't want to see... Uh, unfortunately, it looks like maybe we're going towards back to EX, old EX, uh, new age capital EXs. But the only V Pokemon we've seen have been legendaries, so it's kind of hard to say right now. Um, I really hope we don't just get into another big basic format. We already have that, and eventually... Like, we have to, we have to hit a stopping point eventually, surely. We can't... We, we saw, was it 330 HP? Are they just never going to stop? So I really hope they do stop. <laughs> but I don't know. Um, I also, like, I think the biggest thing is evolu evolutions that can compete. Even even if it's not the evolution cards themselves, like we probably have enough good stage twos right now that could compete if they had enough support. So, so e like the whole concept of Pokemon or one of the main concepts of Pokemon is evolving your Pokemon to make them stronger and then in the TCG, they're just pushing 190 HP basic. Yeah. I would really, really love to see support for evolutions that makes makes it worth evolving right now. Like, stage ones are the biggest evolutions we ever really see. And that's just because they have very, very strong abilities. It's never really... Um, I mean, we've just said about Mykaga GX. Mykaga GX is an attack is insanely strong, but it's just not good enough because you can do the exact same with a basic Pokemon. Yeah. So... We're we're only playing stage ones right now in a lot of cases for things like abilities, and if that's the case, we I I, I would like to see more support to build evolution decks that have evolutions as the main attackers that can compete with this onslaught of just big chunky two yeah. three prize Pokemon. Well, in a similar vein, I think not really like talking about cards themselves, but we've already seen they've changed like the supporter mechanic and the turn one rules. I think I would personally love to see another change to turn one rules which is you can attack as long as you don't deal damage yeah. turn one yeah, but i really think cool. that would be amazing for setup decks in general and i think most people enjoy setup decks no one like dislikes playing those so i think that's good so alongside more support in general just uh let us 
Let's play He's the game. He's a Dunsparce man. <laughs> Let us Dunsparce. Dunsparce was like a four of in so many decks when it was first released, and it is literal bulk right now yeah. for this reason. All right, what are your feelings towards the Sword and Shield game so far? They honestly look like they could be the best Pokemon games ever made, and that's from someone that has just raved about Gen 4 for about five minutes. I think they look incredible. I think they could flop because of how much hype they're getting, but also there hasn't been anything that I'm really disliking so far. I've liked most of the Pokemon they've revealed. I like um, how they're going about it with the gyms. Uh, I, I don't really like the Dynamaxing. I think that looks pretty rubbish. But I do mm -hmm. like the sort of raiding aspect that they're taking over from Pokemon Go, which will be cool for yeah. like friends getting together and stuff, which I think is good. I don't care about the cooking thing. Like the latest thing they the, put the out, curry thing. the curry thing, and the uh, like daycare or whatever it is, we can just the like, daycare is weird. Yeah. Like, I think that just does nothing for me. Um, it's really ju just as long as they don't I, push them too hard in the games. Yeah, I just think as long as it's competitive and as long as the story is long enough, I'll be I'll I've be heard, happy with it. I read a, a thing the other day that said apparently all eighteen gyms are getting all eighteen types are getting a gym, which I think. That would be great. Potentially is great because it's so much content, but also it could mean we have rinse and repeating gyms. Right. But, it, like... I think there are, like, small and big gyms, right? There's, like, mini stadiums. Yeah, maybe, that, and then maybe big that's stadiums, the case. Something so like that. so that, that'd, be, that'd be really cool because, that, like, that's, again, like we said, we just want content in the game. These games come out every... Like, new gens come out every, like, three, four years. So I wouldn't even mind them not doing things like Platinum and the, the third game if they just made the games... Right. Like so, much, like with much more content, but yeah, mm -hmm. they they look pretty good. Right, Logan asks a similar question about favorite cards. Gabriel asks, "Will Great Catcher replace Custom Catcher completely, or just go for a split?" I don't think I don't think it'll ever be a split because I think if you're playing like two Great Catchers and two Custom Catchers, you just play four Great uh, four Custom Catchers. I think it will is more likely to replace Custom Catch completely, and you'll it'll be a really really. It'll be like another um, thing going for non EX decks. It means that they're so much less catchable mm. or gustable, which is really, really strong. Um, and I think, honestly, decks could potentially say that's the case. Because one of the only non EX decks right now, I mean, I guess Reshida is getting a bit more non EX, but is Malamar, um, which obviously is pretty crippled by them gusting your Malamars every mm -hmm. turn. Mm -hmm. um, but I think a lot of decks will make that sacrifice. I think a lot of decks will just go, I want to play. Two, I want to play two more other cards, and I also don't want to have to combo my right. custom catchers to get whatever I want. Especially as a lot of the time people are custom catching dead NAs for game, mm -hmm. so you're getting the same target. It's actually a small amount of matchups that you're not getting the same target. Um, you have a little bit less flexibility in your targets, but you have much more flexibility in deck space, in the like timing, in when you can actually use the cards. So I think, if anything, of those two. Uh, great catcher is more likely to replace custom catcher, and I think it. I'm pretty sure it will do so. Yeah, I'd say the same. I think basically nine tails survives mm -hmm. most of the time. Custom will go out unless you absolutely need it for a, a certain non GX matchup that comes out, like Swords Buckle or some other random deck. But what? I didn't say a word. Cash uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, asks, uh, can any stage two decks really survive in this format? I would say no. No, I don't currently. Know. Are there any are there no. any hot takes from Cosmic Eclipse that could push, or are they all still not quite good enough? Uh, I don't think any are good enough for Cosmic Eclipse either. Um, I, I can't think of anything just anything just from what we looked at the there's other night. There's like there's some non GX ones and there's like Flygon and stuff, but I think they're all too clunky right now. It's just the lack of ball search is killing them out there. I'd say. Uh, Andrew Brown asks. Oh, I guess Gallade is maybe the only one that's like potentially close because of typing it can deal with picarom it can deal with um mewtwo. mewtwo and it can always gust and kill the denes i guess that's the only one that's close but it's still gate kept by mali yeah um andrew asks do you think uh, pokemon is sleepwalking into a much more expensive state with the rising prices of jirachi and the denes making people play cheaper decks uh they may already have instead of playing the correct meta choice uh no, for two reasons. One, they just push the Jirachi product. Uh, three reasons. One, they just pu push the Jirachi product. So I think they are a little bit more self-aware of access to cards, even if it has taken six months for them. Mm -hmm. The Jirachi, it, like the Jirachi's been out for six months, but there's still people looking for Jirachis right now. So that's a huge benefit. The second thing is uh, there's a new Dedene being printed that will potentially be in a box. If it's in a box, that's fantastic because it means it's a promo. 
uh, even if it's not in a box, it will drop the price. And the third thing is people won't not spend money to win the game. Like Mewtwo One Worlds, I think that is evidence enough that people are happy to spend the money to try and do well in the game. Mewtwo is one of the most, especially on release, is one of the most expensive decks I think we've had in a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, and e- even even with things like Mewtwo, Mewtwo, uh, Rush's Eye came out in a box, Mewtwo came out in a tin, Picarom came out in a tin. Even if it's not on release date, within a month, you can get a lot of these cards yeah. for not necessarily a knockdown price, but you can get them lumped at the same price, but with four booster packs. Sure. So even if it's not, you're not saving any money, you're getting more value. So I don't think, I think, I don't think anything will change. I think the game probably will get more expensive and I don't think Pokemon will do much more than they are doing about it because the fact that, I I think alone, the fact that Mewtwo won Worlds after it was released is enough for them to see that people will buy the cards to try and do well. Yeah, and I mean, people don't like to hear this, but it's still like a way cheaper game than most of the TCGs. So like, we got it pretty good, I think. Yeah, definitely. If you want to only lock into one deck, it can cost you like... Maybe only like twenty pounds every new set comes out if you want to get like a a couple like upgrades or different cards coming out. So like you can play a, a decent deck for like six to eight months and that, with yeah, very few changes. Exactly, and that's the thing. We have two friends that this season have said they're playing Malamar, for example, all season. They will not spend more than maybe a hundred pounds on new cards this year, I don't think. Yeah. And they will both I think inevitably get their invites and more yep. just from because the other thing to note is if you're playing one deck you're getting really good with one deck yeah. and you will be able to outplay people a lot more you'll be able to um, see lines of play that a lot of other people don't so like there's pros and cons of course but in comparison like over the past two or three years especially at uni I was able to look at a lot of different other card games things like Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh they are so much more expensive than Pokemon yeah. it's insane like it's 200, 200 and 300 quid for like sometimes even one between one and a play set of three cards for certain decks whereas the Denes right now are the most expensive card in format and they're like 35 quid right yeah yes that sounds like a lot for one piece of cardboard but in comparison it's yeah we, we do have it good for sure thing. all right uh, there's quite a few decks uh, to choose from in this format but do you think turbozard being so op is good for the game and do you think it's still top dog when cosmic eclipse comes into rotation uh we've kind of answered the first part i think mm-hmm. it is still Tier one, um, yeah. I think it's a little bit more defined that Mew- it, it, I think it was kind of argued that Mewtwo was also tier one anyway, but I think it's a little bit more defined than it is now, especially sure. after winning this weekend. Yeah, um, I think things like Picarom and Pidgeotto Control uh, are definitely like one one point five two if you really want to split them up, but they're right. still both decks that can beat the top two decks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so I don't I don't think it's bad for the game. I don't think ever having one best deck in format is bad for the game, really, because there will always be a best deck in format. Like even yeah. if you argue that Turbozard and Mewtwo are the best decks in format, there is one that is either statistically or otherwise the best deck in format. Mm-hmm. So you'll never have a format where there isn't one. Um, statistically, they, you'll obviously have a lot of people with opinions that say, well, Malamar is the best deck in format or whatever, but. Ultimately, there will always be a statistical best deck in format. You can't ever ignore that. And I don't think it's that much of an issue. Uh, as far as Cos- Cosmic Eclipse goes, I think you're probably better off answering, better suited to answering that. But I don't think there's any reason to think it loses much. It still has consistent gusting. It still has access to Welder. Um, there's probably even some... I, I, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but there's probably potentially some fire attackers that it could even... Like Volcarona can slot in, something like that. So I don't see it going anywhere. The yeah. the package is just so strong. Yeah, it can try it some attack no whistle stuff to. as well to yeah. get back welders. Um, the thing I would say, like, one of the reasons why um, the welder box decks are so top tier is because they stand alone in that they have better gusting than anyone else right now. And with Great Catcher coming out, that setting point's just gone. So as much as I think Fire can have better damage output with Volcarona and Ninetales won't get gusted by other Ninetales because there's only Great Catchers around now, um, you're not alone in the world as the best gusting deck. So I think it loses a big selling point from Cosmic Eclipse, even though it doesn't lose anything and potentially gain stuff. I think other decks gain way more mm-hmm. because they've been lacking Great Catcher I mean, the deck desperately. Is, the deck is so good right now, right? It, there's not much it can gain. To, no. So, uh, it, was it, already re- it was already complete, and all yeah. these other decks now get yeah, now complete. Getting that, yeah, 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 yeah. So it may see a 
downtick in play just from everything getting better rather than it getting worse. All right, Mario asks, any uh, non-tag team Jex decks that stand out a chance in the current format uh, that has flown below the radar? Non-tag teams. Uh, at the time of posting this, it was probably the Baby Blounds list. I think that's one of my favorite non-tag team lists. Yeah. If you're going for attacking options, I've said it already this video, I still think Pidgeotto Control is potentially one of the best <laughs> decks out there. So it's a non-tag team deck. But I think at the time of posting the question, we hadn't seen the Baby Blounds list. And it's actually one of the best Baby Blounds lists I think we've had since the card was released. I didn't like it when it first came out. I never I thought it really flopped. But I, th I actually think it's um, probably in its the best place it's been since it came out. It's The format is better for it because it can trade even better. When it first came out, it had Reshizard, which was kind of Green Zard, which was more of a control deck that could stamp it out of game, and it had Pika Rom. Um, so I, I think now it has Mewtwo as well to capitalize on. I think it probably is in the best spot it's been in for a little while. Um, but that being said, I think the tag teams are still too strong. I don't think I'll ever play it because I think there's... <laughs> the, the, the other thing is, like I've said, Reshizard or Turbozard has so many one-prize options nowadays anyway. You can yeah. play that as a one-prize deck. Sure. Um, so right. you don't need to. Good enough answer. All right, Josh asks, he's also saying I could do some expanded stuff, and I could be, and I think I'll be streaming some expanded content over the next couple of weeks, so keep an eye out for that, by the way. Excellent. But he also asks us, least favorite Pokemon? Least favorite Pokemon? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know whether you know this about me. My least favorite Pokemon is Pelipper. I just, I just hate Pelipper. I can't, there, was, there was a reason. I can't remember. I think, I mean, it must have been around Gen 3. But I just, it's, it is my least favorite Pokemon. That's so bizarre. Okay. I don't mind Wingull at all. I think Wingull's quite cool. <laughs> He's chilling. But Mr. Bryony's Wingull. But Pelipper. Incredible. That Yeah. Hot That's take. That's a revelation. Hot take. Pelipper. All right. Well, I don't dislike any Pelipper. Pokemon, really. <laughs> um, but there are some Pokemon out there that are just like, eh. And like the ones that come to mind are, are like Maracta. the Maractuses of the world. Yeah. Um, like Carnivine is pretty trash. Like there's there's a few that I'm just like... What are you on. doing here? Like, get an evolution or get out. Like, you're doing nothing. Yeah. So, that's what I would say. I'm going to endeavour to try and remember what the Pelipper story is. I'll post it somewhere All if right, I do cool. remember it. Taylor asks, what are your initial thoughts on the next set? And do you think anything will change to slow down Ability Zard, even though they're getting better with Volcarona? We've pretty much answered that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, that's cool. Thomas asks, uh, can't keep up with standard. Okay, okay. No questions there. Matt asks thoughts on Pokemon V and V Max, and do you think this? Uh, do you think you would ever stop playing if TPCI keeps going down this route of insane power creep? Uh, v Max, in, uh, well, V initially we've only seen legendaries. I'm praying that it's still an evolution mechanic. I'm kind of doubting it. V Max, it's hard to say because we haven't seen exactly the mechanic. If we're taking that it is a level X mechanic. Again, I've said I don't mind the level X mechanic, but I do agree with Joe that it would be nice to have it as a side deck so you know that you can actually use your cards that you've put into your deck every game rather mm -hmm. than... Um, I don't like how much HP they have. I don't... Up, up until maybe tag teams, I always thought it, they were able to 180 if they really wanted to on right. doing this, and they would have a format or so where it was still dominated by the early... Uh, early GXs that had just a lot more HP, mm -hmm. but then eventually it would all level out. Yeah, with like some stadiums or some supporters. Yeah, yeah. I don't ever... Now, we've hit, now we're hitting 300s as a rule. I don't see that happening. I think this is Where probably here to stay. Yeah. Uh, I could see it not getting any higher eventually. I could see it like capping here, though I've probably said that about 240 or whatever. Sure. Um... And as like I say, as long as they push the non EX stuff as well, I'm fine with having big HPs as long as we have a reason to not play them. Yeah, some glass cannon uptrade yeah. stuff. Yeah. But like if we don't have that, then this the game will carry on going yeah. in an upward direction. I don't think it'll ever be the reason I stop playing. Right. But I it, it's not something I like at all. I think tag teams are one of the worst decisions they've ever made. The concept is really cool, but I think they should have been Two prize po there's two Pokemon, so I think it should have been two prize Pokemon with a similar HP to like GXs, the normal GXs that have the special GX. I think the only thing they need to change about GXs to make them tag teams was just a little plus sign on the yeah. GX attack. That's yeah. all I would have changed. Yeah, good shout. 
I, yeah, and I'm the same. I don't think I'd stop playing the game unless they made some sort of horrible thing that I absolutely hated. We've answered the video games. Favorite non Pokemon video game? Oh, that's a really tough question. I have a soft spot for Final Fantasy VII. That was one of the first RPGs I ever played. Um, I'm a huge Batman fan outside of po uh, outside of Pokemon, so I love all of the Arkham games. I think they are really, really well written and stuff. Um, so yeah, pro those would probably be my two off the top of my head answers. There's probably something I'm forgetting that I'm gonna get angry at myself for later, but all right, I'll go with those. I think um, Dragon Quest Nine is still one of my favorite games. It's a great JRPG. All of the Dragon Quest games are great. It's the only one I've played. Nine really caught me. Yeah. So it was on the DS as well. So I just went everywhere with that game. Yeah. Um, FIFA and COD also I have to shout out because yeah. that was my teenage years. Yeah. Uh, Nathan asks, "How many Maltesers can you fit in your mouth at once?" Well, here we no, <laughs> we actually don't have any. I was really worried there. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'll try that on stream one day. Okay. Uh, Michael asks, can Keldeo GX plus Morwild GX become a thing once we have Misty and Lorelei? Uh, the thing about Keldeo GX is it actually only, it doesn't even one-shot all of the tag teams, right, with its GX attack. No. So yeah. the biggest selling point of doing that to win twice doesn't kill Mewtwo's, doesn't kill Reshi Roms when it's out. You know, I don't, I think there's way less complicated combos that you can do 270 damage for, sure. 250 damage for, I guess. I think uh, Misty and Lorelei as well is such an expensive card that mm -hmm. I don't feel like you can build around it too much. Like, we've seen Bonnie, right? Bonnie was like, use a decent GS attack again, and that was just the cost of a stadium, and now it's the cost of six cards. Like, no, no. Who wants to do that? Don't. We need a very good water GS attack for that card to be good. Alex asks, is Stall viable in best of one or best of three? Stall, if you're referring to Pidgeotto, I guess is the only stall right now. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's viable in best of one. I think it's very viable in best of three. I feel like you could squeak a 30-minute game if you played the Weezing build and you yeah. go pretty turbo. But so I, I think, think the Weezing build is considerably worse. It eats up a lot of space. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, stick to a best of three and win in 40 minutes instead. Emily asks, uh, what direction uh, would you like to see the game take and how could Pokemon deal with the overwhelming power creep? Uh, power creep, like I say, just give us reason to evolve our Pokemon. If we have, like, if even a uh, one th one thing that we were talking about the other day, this is something I should have mentioned earlier on, is having old rare candy rule back. Old rare candy rule will be a huge step forward. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I still don't think it would change much because we don't have the cards to play with right now. <laughs> yeah. But having old rare candy rule means we ha actually have to look at every single stage two again. Right. I mean, how many stage twos did you look at like this set review and which like, well, there's no I point. Don't think, in, yeah. There is no point in talking about this card because it's a stage two and it then dust doesn't enough. It yeah. just doesn't do enough. So old rare candy rule would be actually one thing that I should have mentioned about four times this video already. Um, what direction would you like to take? If they're not going to lower the maximum HP, just stop raising it. Yeah. I was I was annoyed, but happy at 240. Right. I'm yeah. now anno very annoyed and not very happy at 330. And I'm just waiting for them to... Because this is the first set as well. Mm -hmm. All we need, like, in about three sets time, they'll be like, oh, this is the new big right. thing. And it's 400. And, right, you right. know, it's just... So, yeah. yeah. Give us a reason to play. Yeah, and I think the reason has to be better than, like, duh, Keldeo, you can't play the game, or, like, duh, Alolan yeah. Persian. It, we block you. We need, like, Cessation Crystal and Crystal Beach and all those sorts of cards from, like, way back when that would have good counterplay. The, the players playing these big, dumb, strong decks can have some counterplay, but they're put off by them. So mm -hmm. I would prefer it in forms like stadiums, like supporters, like item, because then they can be splashed into decks. Rather than like, this is one card that just says no, because that's lazy and pretty boring. So yeah. But Pokemon want to make money, so they'll power creep cards all the time. That's just something we have to deal with. Um, they want you to buy the newest set, because it'll give you the best chance of winning most of the time, right? Mm -hmm. So that's just uh, a fact of a company. It's always going to be part of the game, so yeah. they'll never completely wreck themselves. Mm -hmm. Uh, Davi asks, best cube combo you've ever seen? And I think we were both present for the best cube combo <laughs> we've ever seen. Sheffield Regionals, 2018. <laughs> Benjamin Pavington. <laughs> he no longer plays this game, and it is honestly a shame. He made, through everyone's surprise... His first ever draft. His first ever draft. He made... It was like this Porygon control deck that... 
I, I mean, I can't even describe how it works so, now. Yeah, I mean, it was... so it drew about 16 cards a turn, trump carded almost every turn, and reused Devo Spray to devolve you with one of the Porygons, use the other Porygon to get back, like, Professor Oak and Draw. Bill, and um, he had, like, both Juniper and Sycamore. So, like, he was literally motoring, devolving you every turn, and using, like, one um, boost energy that he was recycling with a trump card <laughs> right. to hit you for 80. And it was, like, <laughs> filth because your guy was devolved. <laughs> It was insane. It was insane. It was the longest turn was, he could ever have. And this was from someone that played Volcanion for so long. So he like he didn't play control decks and that kind of thing. No, ever. He was he was a super aggressive player. Like not aggressive. But he was a super aggro player mm -hmm. in terms of decks. Um, Completely blew us away. That's it's the best deck I've ever seen. It yeah. was it was incredible. Another shout out was probably when we were in Valencia. We played a cube with Tord, and Tord's deck there was it was pretty similar to be honest. Yeah, it was pretty um, broken. So yeah, those those two decks are definitely up there. But Ben's Ben's deck was just mental, and he, then he quit playing. He he's been to one league cup since. Tipped his cap. Yeah, and just said, left. I've peaked. Uh, I think the best cube I have best cube combo I had was when I had Empoleon, um, Infinite Level X, and two Nine Tails. So I was drawing about eleven cards a turn as well. Mm. That was pretty good, and you could do about two hundred a turn just by binning a bunch of fires with yeah. uh, stuff. That was also in Valencia. Good cube weekend, that one. That was. All right. Jeremy asks, what's the best way for a newer player to get better at this game? It's a great question. Uh, PC Joe has so much accessibility. That's got to be up there. Um, I think for me, though, it would be going like looking for local leagues. League got me playing so much. It, I, like, I didn't go... I, I, I started attending a league when I was already pretty deep into playing anyway, so it wasn't like I went to go and improve, but it just... It gives you contacts, which is incredibly mm -hmm. good for getting to tournaments, yeah. sharing card pools. For the first, like, I think four years, me and Joe pretty much shared a, car, uh, a card pool, which was so useful for both of us because it meant mm -hmm. we had access to so many more decks. So that's a, one huge thing about leagues. And two, there are people, if you've never played before, they have usually, like, at least tier one level judges at these events that will happily teach you the fundamentals of the game. Um, so I think PC Joe is great, but you will often, when starting a new account, you'll initially play against absolute dreg decks, which if you initially get a good deck, it feels like you... Like my friend uh, started playing, I think it was when God of War was released, and he went on like a 52 win streak or something, just because I gave him all of the cards for Guardian, his first 35 games were against right. theme decks, because right, it naturally, right. the MM, naturally how the MMR works... So that so in that respect it isn't great, but then if you go in with a theme deck, eventually you'll get to the point where you're just getting battered by meta decks all the time. Sure. So I think you PC Joe is really really good in some ways, um, but also really really it's it's tough to get into in some instances. So I think League is my biggest hot tip because leagues are just but they're also like if you if you start building a network as well, like I say, card pool, being able to go to events with people. Also, more often than not, you'll be able to find out that they have events there, things like pre-releases, League Cups, League Challenges, all the entry-level events that are the first events that you want to be going to rather than going to an Internats and bombing at, like, 09 and being like, oh, why the hell am I playing this game? You know, start low-level tournaments, local leagues, that kind of thing. That's how I've seen a lot of people get into this game and they're still playing now rather than just people that, are. Oh, I have the money, I have 200 quid to build a deck and go to Internats, I bombed, right. well, why would I carry on playing this deck? Or you right. just didn't approach it in the right way, in my opinion. And the thing I would say as well is really latch on to players who you know are better than you as well at these at these leagues and wherever you can find people. Latch on to the people who are definitely better than you and just um, ask questions. Everyone in the community will be happy to help you out. They want to see you improve as well. Mm -hmm. So um, if you can get someone better than you to sort of take you under your wing, it will definitely push you in the game because they'll show you things that weren't even in your like field of vision a lot of the time, things you've not even thought about. Um, these players with more experience um, will definitely show you the ropes, really. Mm -hmm. Judas asks, have you ever played the format No RNG? I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? I think he's just saying like a format with oh. uh, as little RNG as possible. I, I don't know what the least RNG-based format is that we've played. I don't really know. Um, playing Gramble is about the only thing close to that. I mean, there's a couple of decks out there that you just 
say no to RNG and you're completely mm -hmm. built on your own deck. Um, but I think <laughs> I think any format, honestly, with Gust has some element of R RNG because finding Gust on the right turns is so key in this game. Mm -hmm. and I don't think I've ever played in a format without Gust, so I right. probably haven't played in a format without at least some level of RNG. All right. Uh, do we have any other questions? We have, how do I get better at cube? And will you open... Or will you open to cubing with fans at Worlds? Or would I be open to doing that? Uh, well, now that Worlds is in London, I can bring my cube. And that's really we exciting. Can, we, I mean, you're already building a second cube, right? We could probably bring. Yeah. It, we could probably make a few cubes. Um, a, of cubes. a lot of our friends have cubes as well. I've got at least two friends uh, like who will be able to bring their cubes to London. Maybe three friends, actually, who will bring their cubes to London. Um, because we're all locals and we don't have the restrictions of a suitcase so yes lots of cubing will be happening at worlds this year um and i'll definitely be open to doing it with fans i don't I'll, I'll have to think of a way of doing it maybe like a raffle or maybe like i don't know uh some sort of quiz or i don't know some sort of yeah. way to get people to enter yeah. um but yeah i'm definitely open to letting more people experience cube because that's like my favorite thing more people that get involved in this format the better in my opinion so that yeah. would be awesome and getting better at cube it's just experience it's just you just have to live it and and see and then like as you play your decks you realize what you have to prioritize and as you play the games you get a better feel for the format every cube can be slightly different as well so like i can't just tell you to pick these cards mm -hmm. you sort of have to feel your way through most of the time so um the general rule of thumb is like pick cards that will help you get into the game first and then like if you see a card that is obviously powerful you have to pick it and don't undervalue trainers don't, is another thing yeah that i think a lot of people early do they're like oh mm -hmm. well i'll find another because a lot of in a lot of people's minds they like the you way see, decks are built are you see not... a sharon <laughs> yeah like, well why the hell would i take this but mm -hmm. then actually that's potentially one of the best trainers in the format yeah the one one big thing that i learned actually really recently about cubes is um when knowing when to take like uh build around cards like a, mm -hmm. a raichu or something that's obviously mm -hmm. an incredible attacker and when to say i will get another build around card i'm i need to take maybe even a suboptimal trainer just to know that i'm going to get into to work. the game and that's something i've personally have been trying to do a little bit more with my mm. cubing experience i think it is has been somewhat successful don't in sometimes when you see a really really good build around card it's great but also sometimes make sure like you say you're getting into the game because it doesn't matter if you've got this huge right that's going to take going to do 120 if you can't get into the game it'll do it once and your opponent will have taken six prizes it's st it's still lost. it's still the fundamentals of pokemon get yeah. in the game first make sure your deck works and then make sure it's powerful from then on i think that's it is 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. the most difficult format i've ever played of pokemon is the, the cubing format it's obviously all cubes are different but mm -hmm. cubing in general is completely different to any type of pokemon so don't expect to jump in and be like oh there's very few people that i've met that can pick up a cube and build a deck immediately yeah and and it will be comparable to people who have done it 10 times yeah 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 yeah, yeah. you just got to get out there and do it all right mike asks is giratina the answer to keldeo in mu3 i really like giratina in mu3 um i don't know that it's the definitive answer but i think and it, no, Giratina is actually. Uh, oh no, Giratina did well in Isaiah's list. Um, I think I would try and play Giratina if I could. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's either the Greninja Blue or it's the uh, the Giratina shenanigans with yeah. Solgaleo trying to power it up. Both are kind of fine. I think I play Giratina. Yeah. All right. Last couple of questions. Tom asks: The format is pretty freaking meh right now. Oh, I'm, that's not a question. I'm fine that's with the format. A, a I'm fine with the format. All right. So we actually have. Uh, yeah, that's all of our questions. Sweet. That's all of our questions done. And Connor has arrived, Just in time for a Connor. which is perfect. So we're going to leave now. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for sending in. us all the questions and listening to us blither on about the game. Ramble. Um, so yeah, we'll see you in another video. Uh, well, for me. Shortly. Shortly. Yeah. Cheers. Bye.